Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of the Saturdays for the Byzantines podcast. My name is Professor Wren. I'm your host. Uh, disclaimer, I am not a professor at any university, American or otherwise. Uh, I don't have a doctorate. Uh, simply the reason that I use the title of professor, and again, it's a, it's a pseudonym. My last name is not really Wren. Uh, sometimes you just got to be careful what you put on the internet. doesn't matter how uh, uncontroversial you might think it is. Um, but, you know, I kind of think of this series as a, as a way I can present uh, uh, almost a class to you, almost a Byzantine history class, and the only place you would really receive that is at a university. Most high schools, you're not learning any anything like this, um, except to, unless you go to some uh, uh, rare classical type high school. But today... Uh, we're doing a shorter episode again. Uh, I've I've talked about how I wanted to um, do do some shorter episodes, kind of release them during the week. Typically, our long episodes are released on the weekend. And uh, I, but sometimes there's topics that I wanted to get to that you know, I didn't have time to get to, or I kind of glossed over in the main podcast. And so I want to do shorter episodes uh, to kind of touch on those issues and those topics as well. So today uh, we're going to be talking about monophysitism, which is another church heresy. But before we do that, I want to remind you that if you're watching this video, please on YouTube, please make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and then gently tap the notification bell so we never miss another episode when it will notify you as soon as it as it, as it gets uploaded. Uh, please follow us on Apple Podcast on Spotify and on Google Play, and give us a five star review. Apparently, five star reviews really help. And uh, uh, Instagram, follow us on Instagram at academics underscore 95. That's A-C-A-D-E-M-I-X underscore 95, where we post updates about the show. Uh, I'll post updates when an episode is uploaded. And we'll also post, um, you know, memes and other fun stuff about history. It's not always going to be exactly about Byzantine history. Sometimes it'll be about ancient history or uh, medieval history. Excuse me. Uh, things like that. And then you can also follow us on Twitter. Uh, Twitter page is not quite as active, but the Twitter, you can find us at, at Professor Run if uh, Twitter is your preferred social media. And so today, let's get right into it. We want to talk about monophysitism. So what what is the deal with monophysitism? Well, it was started by a guy named Eukides. Sorry, Eudike, Eudikes, excuse me, not Eukides, Eudikes. Now, how, who is Eudikes? Well, he was also from Alexandria. We, met, we mentioned in the last episode, uh, our friend St. Cyril of Alexandria, who's the primary opponent of Nestorianism. Now, Eudikes, you, yeah, Eutikes, Really should have practiced this more before I started. Uh, he was a fo- so he's a follower of Saint Cyril of Alexandria. He's also trying to fight back against Nestorianism. However, he does it kind of clunkily and accidentally ends up preaching heresy. And so uh, he what he ends up saying is instead uh, right. So uh, Nestorianism was the idea that Jesus had mainly a human nature with a little bit of a divine nature sprinkled in there. Uh, not exactly divine from the moment of conception. And so uh, Eutyches, in attempting to uh, combat the Nestorian heresy, uh, takes it too far in the opposite direction. So instead of saying that Jesus is fully human and fully divine, uh, he says that Jesus is only divine, okay? He only has a divine nature. Now, if we look at the word, if we break down the word monophysitism, I always do this with students. Uh, You you know, sometimes these words are big and and they're confusing and, oh my gosh, I don't know what that word means. I gotta gotta put the book down, so hard. Slow down, breathe. Let's break the word up into its component parts and then we can uh, figure out what it means. And yes, I did this and I wrote this out on a notepad and then I took a picture of it and I put it in a PowerPoint because uh, uh, technology is great. But so monophysitism. Uh, so 
Mono, the first part of the word, just means one. Uh, Fizet or Fizet or Fizet uh, just means nature, and then ism, anything that ends in the in the in ism, means like a beliefism, a belief, a beliefism, a belief in something, right? So if you're a Buddhist, you believe in Buddhism, okay? If you are uh, if you subscribe to the philosophy of Karl Marx, you believe in Marxism. If you subscribe to the teachings of the Catholic Church, you believe in Catholicism, okay? However, nowadays you get, uh, if, you, if you watch sports, I like sports, um, a lot of uh, sports commentators will talk about how a guy has great athleticism. And it's like, well, what does that mean? Belief in athletes? You can just say athletic ability. He has great athletic ability and you're expressing the same thing while using real words. But anyway, enough about that. So, so yes, he, uh, Eutyches uh, says that Jesus only has one nature and it's a divine nature, no human nature. Now this is a problem because in order for uh, Jesus to bring salvation to the world, he has to partake in the human experience, right? He has a full... Uh, uh, the orthodox teaching is that Jesus has a full human nature as well as a full divine nature, 100% human, 100% divine. And if you think about it for a second, um, if Jesus is only divine, how, how exactly does he die, right? It, it, you can't, if he's, if he's purely divine, you can't kill a God. So he would not, it would have been very hard for you to say that he uh, suffers on the cross and dies and then resurrects. Um, be, because if you're not human, and you're only divine, how exactly do you die? That's, that's a, a, a real question in the issue. Now, this calls for yet another church council. And uh, the big guy at this one is Pope Leo, Pope Leo the Great. Now this is the same Pope Leo who confronts uh, Attila and convinces Attila to turn around when he's marching towards Rome. We'll talk about that in our Huns episode. And then he also uh, talks to uh, Geyseric, who is the leader of the of the Vandals, and also convinces him. Well, the Vandals still sack Rome in 455, but they only take stuff. They leave people alone, which, you know, sometimes you got to take it where you can get it. Uh, but so from the council... Of, and this is the council, the council of Chalcedon, or you might say Chalcedon, depending. Uh, uh, you know, it, it is more of an Eastern thing, so you kind of have a tendency to take the um, the Greek pronunciation, which would lean more towards the hard K instead of the soft, the softer C sounds. Um, personally, like when it comes to Latin. I am much more of a, uh, of the ecclesiastical, you know, I say Bene Vidi Vici, not Wenny Witty Wiki, because it just sounds ridiculous. I always, I always joke that the church uh, saved Latin from itself because the classical pronunciation just sounds right. And, and the, the more ecclesiastical, the more Italian sounding pronunciation just, so, it sounds nicer, right? I understand, I understand the Romans didn't talk like that, all right? Like, cool your jets there. But so out of the Council of Chal uh, Chalcedon, where again, Pope Leo is presiding over it, obviously, and he's, he's involved in calling this. Um, there are four things which come out of the council. Uh, rules, four things, essentially. So number one is that Jesus has two natures. Okay, so none of this one nature, again, monophysite uh, stuff. Uh, secondly, that those two natures were that Jesus was 100% human and 100% divine. Not half and half, not 75-25, not 60-40, 100% human and 100% divine. The way I teach uh, kids about this is I tell them instead of thinking about it as uh, splitting up a pie, right, like a pie chart, just think of it as two pies, right? So he's got one human pie and one divine pie. Jesus is so great, he gets two pies. The, re the rest of us, we get one pie, but uh, compared to Jesus, are we that great? Not really. 
The council also rules that Jesus had both uh, of these natures from his conception. So from the moment of Jesus's conception, he was both 100% human and 100% divine. And there's no, none of this, like he becomes divine later on, or he, he, uh, he was never really divine. He was just a really nice guy or no, none of that. And then the fourth thing that it rules is that these two natures come together to form uh, God, the son, who is the second person in the Holy Trinity. Now, <clears throat> uh, Nestorian, or sorry, monophysitism will stick around for a little while, uh, mostly in Egypt. Uh, there are still some strains of monophysitism that remain in the uh, Coptic church today. Uh, although there are uh, cops who are in communion with Rome, uh, the church has basically decided that it, it's, you know, you agree to disagree and it's better to be in communion than out of communion with a lot of these groups. And so, um, you know, although there is a difference, it's not anything that's, again, the better, better to be in communion than out of communion. But that really concludes uh, our talk today about monophysitism. Mean, yeah, obviously there's more you could say about monophysitism, but this is about all I want to talk about uh, uh, regarding the issue. So if you've made it this far in the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you never miss another episode. You'll get a notification when it's, when it's uploaded. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Play, please give us a follow and uh, give us a five-star review. Uh, I will be uploading the audio for this episode to the podcast uh, uh, feeds. However, excuse me, if you want to see the visuals, if you want to see the video, you're going to have to watch on YouTube. So uh, you can listen to it and then you can watch it on You can watch it twice. It's fine by me. Also follow us on Instagram at academics underscore 95. That's A-C-A-D-E-M-X underscore 95, where we post updates about the show and fun memes about history and various other things. And you can also follow us on Twitter at Professor Run. So that's all I have for you guys today, and I'll see y'alls next time.